I've been looking into uh, flat earth now for probably about two years, but more seriously in the last year. And I also had an interest in the Nazca lines. And what I'm going to do here is show you how the two actually relate to each other. To do that, I'll have to take you back a little bit in history to when we took to the skies and we were flying over Nazca, Peru. Uh, because the Nazca lines, you can't really see them unless you're at altitude. So what people were seeing was blueprints. You'll come to find these are blueprints. And people were starting to form a picture of what it was telling them. This uh, blueprint here, it's the Sun Star of Peru. It's a, a 12 by 12 grid. Six concentric circles, six squares, and six rhombi. This is one of the uh, Nazca mandalas at Peru. I'll go into more detail what all these lines on that one mean soon. This one's also from Nazca, Peru. It's called the Nazca mandala. Now, it doesn't matter which the mandala you look at, whichever religion or location in the world, you'll find they're all telling the same story. There's a square, there's circles, there's things in the corner, and there's something in the center. So my kind of research, I started looking at these and I started overlaying them with world maps. Here's an image where I was overlaying them with the annelium orbits, trying to make sense of them. And I was surprised how well they fit in with annelium orbits. This one here, there's some more information on it. Uh, basically what it's telling you is that it's uh, giving you the dimensions of this grid. And at the end of it, it wanders off into what it says is the distance between the sun and earth, which we know is a lie. It's not that far away. What it's really describing here is the internal cubed dimensions of a Merkaba. That's where this figure is really coming from. If you follow this through, you will see it is cubing a Merkaba. So consider that and we'll continue with this. You notice the 666 there, that's been referenced uh, in scripture before, and lies been told about it. That's what I'd mentioned that there. <laughs> right, so with this configuration, it gives us this. This map here is the one done by Ceres. And above all, this, this network of grids onto his map. Take a look at the grids. There's an 8x8, which is the center grid with these three things in each corner. And then the external grid of the 12 by 12. So I'm now looking at how this relates to a world map. I'm using this world map because it's the only world map I've found that shows the true scale of Antarctica. Now you can see correlation going on here uh, where things start to line up. I'm going to go more into detail later in the video of, of things in between what you can see there also and more detail on the grid itself. Again, referenced biblically or in scripture, the angels in the north, south, east and west. I think they're relating to these four corners that are shown on the 8x8 grid. The 8x8 grid is the what we would probably be known as the Antarctic Circle. Going by their own numbers, I think it was 24,800 miles on the globe. You know, the circumference of the globe, 24,800 miles or thereabouts. On this, you know, that would equate to each square on the grid being 3,100 miles going from one side of the Antarctic to the other. Now, this uh, demonstration you're seeing here is the whole grid lit up. The 12 by 12 and the 8 by 8 and a Merkaba added on top to see what it's forming. And what a pretty picture it paints, doesn't it? Um, that's where I was going the Nazca lines. Now, a little more detail on the 12 by 12. The Solomon's Temple. If you decode Solomon, it really means Solo Mono, Temple of the Sun and Moon. Now, if you look at it in detail here, you notice when you put these geoglyphs into a 3D environment and pan around them, you start seeing a different picture being presented. If you look carefully, you will see a six-tier pyramid with six concentric circles encircling it. So that got me thinking, you know, is this something below us? 
what's down below us is this the underworld that's been mentioned you know the underworld referenced in scripture and the book of enoch these places below ground food for thought perhaps but it got me thinking about uh, pyramids and portals let's take a look at that again we've got the 12 by 12 no overlay the 8 by 18 Now then, if you look carefully, is this what the Pyramid of Giza is depicting? Remember, the Pyramid of Giza is referenced in the Bible as a, as a monument. But a monument to what? Is it this place below that it's a monument to? And these exits or entry entry points that you see on this um, these four corners connecting to the center, is this what Enoch referenced as portals? Portals, gates, you know, a portal translates as a gate, a gateway. But a gateway to what? You know, I, I start looking at this now and I see electrical connection. You're king and queen, you're positive and you're negative. These uh, star shafts, well, they're probably just cables. Here's some images from Stan Smith and the 360 team's cameras. It shows the moon's path appearing to come from out of the ground and return back in. This is a 360 camera. You know, you see loss on the left and on the extreme right and south directly in the centre. Same again. You're getting this path of the moon rising up and coming down and vanishing. Which, you know, when you watch the 360 cameras, it looks, does appear like they're going underground below you. Following the, you know, the trajectory that they're on. These have yet to be explained. But the model I'm going to present to you, I think it kind of, kind of explains this away. Another part of this project, uh, I'm going to take you to CERN, the technological monster. And people wonder what, it, what they do there. Take note of these lights in the, on the ceiling. Because what I think CERN is, I think it's a reverse engineered technology, which is capable of projecting a beam we can't see into the sky. If you look at the circles at the bottom, there's a small circle and a large circle. They have counter rotating flow of energy and i think this creates a third halo that isn't visible to us but enoch referenced as chariots we'll get more into that don't worry <laughs> and i think the sun the sun and moon actually use these to maneuver around our sky take a look at this um video taken by brennan clark on youtube he reported it as a camera malfunction or, or the, the unit, the motor that the camera was on, but that was me tracking it. And it appears to go around the outside of one circle around another. This here, I think this is CERN's predecessor. The reason I say that is the design of it. It appears to be alive, neutral and earth with two elements in the centre which are possibly counter-rotating uh, the floor, which would create an electromagnetic field. So this is what I think is responsible for the what you see and report as the flower of life. It is this technology. The Fibonacci sequence. If that doesn't make sense, keep watching. <laughs> You know, I'm putting this together. I haven't got a script written out for this. This is coming off the top of my head and um, research. Here's another thing, a purpose that I think it's it's doing. Remember, you've got the, the rotating toroidal electromagnetic field. And I think they are responsible for this. Volcanoes. Also notice the mountain range in the background curving around the halo. Remember, we can't see the halo. And it's uh, when you think about CERN, CERN is just one of these, a particle accelerator. Here's another effect I think they're responsible for. Remember, we don't see the halo, but add some water, you're going to get some arcing.
So consider that people, this is a type of technology that is creating a halo in the sky. And what you're looking at is a particle accelerator, antimatter to matter. And if you haven't guessed it yet, you are looking at an angel and its halo. This is an angel and its halo. And this is how they work, they're particle accelerators. You can do antimatter to matter. Because when you start going down the route of looking it into angels, you start going into the, uh, the Enochian language. Do you believe this was a blueprint found in England, UK? And it's not unique to UK either. Uh, sorry, not a blueprint, a crop circle. It's a crop circle from UK, but this it's not unique to UK. This design's been seen before. But the design itself gives the game away to me. Why would something of that design exist? It's got mathematical precision, and its purpose appears to be something to do with these two uh, elements in the centre. One being larger than the other, and one having a counter will take the floor. Like I said, when you start looking into this technology, well, I'll say, I'll say this technology, it takes you into the angelic language. And again, the towers mentioned in the north, south, east, west, and it becomes the union of elements. And that's like a table of elements, that's how it works. And it's all, as it says here, it's attributed to spirits, the, the black cross or the table of union, the forming of elements. The further you look into this, you find it leads to a university in Greece and then you run to a brick wall. The information isn't public, so I can't decode those and I don't know if they're real, but and to be protected such, <laughs> it would suggest there's a, a bit of merit there. This here is my take on what Rahu is. Rahu, I now think, is a, an angel's halo in the sky where people have always noticed the sun and moon eclipsing. It seems to be a location and this could be the reason why it's always that location because it will always be there you've got the, the rotating flow of the halo and the sun and moon going across it one going one way one going the other as we noticed in the august eclipse Ketu would be the complete opposite the sun on the near side and the moon on the far side Right, look at this webcam footage from Newmere Station in Antarctica. Do you see unusual movements from our sun and moon there? Or the actual closeness of our sun and moon, should I say? That station's facing roughly south, southeast. So that, that sun and moon rise came from the south of Antarctica, which has been mentioned by Admiral Byrd before. But do notice on this footage, this is real footage from their own cameras. It's a German station in Antarctica. Look what's going on here with the sun. Does this look normal to you people? You can go on, the, on YouTube and look at loads of videos of this. I'll give you links even to some of them. There's things going on here that is not normal to our sun and moon. And not to mention the closeness of how they appear going past this station. Take a look at the moon here on this clip. Look how close it looks. I urge everyone to go and search this, this uh, camera on YouTube because you will see some amazing phenomenal footage of our luminaries going past this area, which <laughs> don't make sense unless you start considering technology. You're going to have to consider a technological world, people. Here's some real footage of real halos that people are capturing in the sky of the sun going round them. These aren't fake, these are real. And if you look on the halos, you will see nodal points. There's nodes on the halo. The two closest to the sun usually lit up quite bright, which gives the effect of two or three sunrises or sunsets, which people seem to report. But it's a halo projected from below, and the sun is traversing it. On its, on, on its set path for that time of year, wherever it may be. But these are real. What I want people to do here is go out and record these if they see them, because we need to locate these and put them on the map. So if you see one of these halos in the sky, try and record its location. Uh, roughly, if you can guess the centre of the halo, that would help. I would expect it to be a hill, a volcano, mountainous terrain perhaps. 
And the reason that you're seeing them is because they spray barium. Barium will illuminate a geomagnetic field line from pole to pole. So we're looking at uh, electromagnetics. It's an electromagnetic projection into the sky from said angel below. Consider that, people. Now, let's take a look at what that would look like. We already know there's 40 uh, on the external of the 8x8 8 and 32 on the internal. But we know there's more than this because, like I said, when you go down the angelic language, you find there's 92 angels minimum. But there's still another 12 to locate and put on that grid at a minimum. You might remember these um, mimic maps, the mimic maps there that we've looked at before. Now, if you watch this one carefully, you will see a double helix forming as part of it. And also notice the heavy signalling going from Easter Island on the left and somewhere off Australia on the right. Heavy signal signalling goes towards Antarctica from Easter Island. Interesting. They hit the double helix, and not to mention the double helix, but the date. The date's quite important because this was the winter equinox in 2016. And it tells me there's some kind of switching going on. And these, whatever is at Easter Island or below Easter Island is sending signals down to Antarctica and things are being switched, which is how I think it creates the seasons. Things will get rerouted and switched on and off. The sun, sun and moon's paths will get rerouted around these halos and the orbits of those larger halos you, you've seen and go about its business. Take a good look at this. You know, you can see it. This was recorded from their own mimic map. They're now trying to hide this. They cut those lines out and they make a bad job of it, actually. And you'll see where they're cutting pieces out to try and hide what's going on. Also, Hawaii. Hawaii is playing a part. There's lots of places in the world playing a part in this. So I'm, I'm revealing to you how it is technologically driven is where I'm going. The technology involved in how this world works. Notice the signaling. See it? You can't miss it. There's even another type of signaling comes from down there that you haven't seen on this one, but I think it's scale wave signaling. And it spans the whole of South America going towards the United States when it signals. Now, this is the double helix overlaid on, I'll just pause it there. This is the double helix overlaid on what Ceres found to, and calls the four pillars, which point towards the centre of our world today. Uh, Africa would be just slightly right of centre in the middle of that helix. And you see the pattern it's forming there between these four pillars. It's like a signal looping back and through between these four pillars. Again, the four pillars biblically referenced. The Bible's telling truths and it's panning out into what we're, the research we're finding here. Here's uh, some overlays of uh, earthquake data and possibly volcano data. Just so I can, you know, I can see how it relates to the grid. I'm trying to follow paths on this grid to see what's going on with this grid. There's 20 years worth of solar eclipses. Now, if people can make sense of that, excellent. Uh, you know, it doesn't mean a lot to me. I just want to overlay it and show it people. I've added this clip because uh, I seen a video a few weeks ago, people wondering about something in the Book of Enoch where it mentions mountains will jump into the sky like lambs. Well, the only time they can do that is if there's an angel below and a halo above because the halo above has got that pull factor on land. Like I said, it raises land mass. I also think the Egyptians figured out how to harness this upward toroidal field of energy. And that's what the pyramids possibly would, were designed to do. And here's Easter Island, the statues on Easter Island, silently telling their story of involvement. They are playing a part in this somehow. But it doesn't appear to be anything on the surface. It seems to be below Easter Island where those signals are coming from, because I can't see antennas on the surface. 
whatever's happening there, it's coming from below. So now we have this kind of projection. We've got these halos in the sky. These are the ones you would probably be called the tropics. And then there's also smaller ones to fit in on this where these dots on the grid align. So that's uh, there's 80 to go on the grid, 80 halos, say, plus whatever other ones we can locate. So we do want people locating these halos in the sky. We need to map out. I think that's what they've been doing with the bearing, mapping them out where, where what's where. And we're just following their footsteps here. They're mapping the sky, so we better take the, grab the opportunity and do the same where these halos located. You can see where these ones would be located on this world map. And you can see where it intersects key sites. The red and gold parts are, are elevated terrain. So where you see red or gold or yellow, it is elevated. And you can see where this grid would play a part in the elevation. I would expect to see raised land mass like you can see in south. If you look at Antarctica, all those lines intersect at a southern point. So that landmass, it makes sense to me that landmass would be more raised, and that's the data series is getting. It's very elevated compared to the rest of the world. And I would attribute that to the, the congregation of that grid being there. There's, there's rock down there playing its part on the grid. There's a lot of sites in the world playing a part on this grid. And what we'll be doing is adding them slowly but surely over time, as we, as we figure out the the world map and such. You know, we, we all these site all these ancient sites need placed on here. It's some magnetic data series overlaid. This is a snapshot of a magnetic data overlaid on that world map. And you see how it comes down in the north and south and kind of loops over the top of the world, the known world. This is a view looking north from South Antarctica. Magnetic lines again. Does it make sense to you people? Does it remind you of a ribbon cable on a computer perhaps? Different paths to take. Same again. This is looking south from the north. Something in the, the on the east side of the map there, going up over Australia and coming down Antarctica. And on the opposite side, on the west side, you've got a uh, it coming from Antarctic, but going up and coming down and appearing to go into the sea. Very strange. <laughs> That's magnetic data, real data overlaid. So maybe this old map here does have some merit after all. These are the world chakras. And if you look at them, you know, there's some interesting locations there and it makes sense. You're getting a double helix end out of the, out of the shape. Take note of the text at the bottom. It's 5, 10... 11 and 12 are spinner wheels marked SW. I think you should be able to work out now what a spinner wheel really is. It's a halo. And it's helping guide this signal around the world. There's a look at the bottom left there. Female great dragon and you've got a male great dragon. I think we should know now dragons are probably volcanoes. You know, that would make sense. But I, did, I never considered a female dragon. <laughs> A female and a male dragon. Yeah, interesting. So something else to take into account to you people. I'll just leave it clear and you'll see it. Oh. Are we looking at something like this? You see where this is going? Stan Smith and the 360 team are currently looking into uh, this kind of relationship. And so I thought I'd put that map on there because I can see where my work now starts all over overlaying into what Stan Smith's team's looking at. I just thought I'd put that there for you, Stan. <laughs> see if it helps you. But yeah, I think you're on the right path. So let's get down to the heart of the matter, people. This is Satan. You remember Satan? This is him here, the heart of the machine. It said Satan runs the world. Well, if it's technology, then I would have to agree, because this is what's right at the heart of all this technology. So the worry, I would guess, would be 
you know, these halos can reroute the sun or moon if CERN or another CERN unit projects one in the wrong place. And who knows what would happen. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank some members of my research team, Cat's Eyes, JLO 1982, been taking picks Kathleen, Adrian, and Will Bishop. These are good people, very good people, good researchers and loyal. I'm still working with these people and others. There's more people coming into the mix. Um, this kind of research is ongoing. You know, the, the goal here for me personally would be to get all this into Unreal Engine 4 with VR support. So you've got virtual reality and you can take a full tour around the world. <laughs> that would be nice to see. But I also want the um, the tour Enoch got, the world tour and the underworld tour. When you listen to the book of Enoch, he's trying to describe something that is impossible for him to describe. So he does, he does his best to describe it. And I think he is describing technology. The easiest thing to describe either, like I said, I haven't made a script for this. So I'm just like, off the top of the head, I'm guiding you through the kind of research we've been doing. <laughs> 